get yourself here and just drink in this amazing environment. What have you got to lose? Nothing. So we mentioned that we were staying at this amazing um, low-cost camp just outside of Jinjin. Um, it's called Candyland Farm. It is on Wiki Camps, uh, also on Hip Camps, which is where I happen to find the contact details for the host, Cass and Andy. Um, they have been absolutely amazing. You'll see why I'm laughing in a minute. Absolutely amazing throughout this uh, entire booking process. So thank you guys so much. They have a beautiful, beautiful property to share with everybody here. I'm not sure how well known this place is, but if you get an opportunity to stay here, contact them. There are only two sites available. One of them, I'm not sure if you can see, you might be able to see the camper trailer top just down by the river there. And there is another one that's further up the hill. And this is why I'm laughing. <laughs> They've got these cows. Um, these, these five cows live in the top paddock. They're all very friendly, apparently. Um, so if you are staying in the, in the upper camp, they might come and say g'day to you like they currently are now. Um, so yeah, if you happen to see them, make sure you say g'day. Hey fella. not interested because I don't have any food I don't feel yeah. so yeah these these five cows um oh, roam around in the top paddock g'day they're just loving life loving it guess he'll just keep moving along that was a good one I love that <laughs> um yeah so we're just gonna go for a walk up the top of the hill I'll show you roughly where the top site is on on the property so this is the back part of the the property there's andy there in the red shirt don't know if you can see him um but yeah building that granny flats where sandra um the mother and also if cass and andy aren't here to greet you sandra is very 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 helpful hosts so thank you so i'm at the upper campsite right now i'm just going to quickly turn you around and show you exactly what the views are like from here Like, come on guys, come on. You do get a fire pit. You do get, with your stay, uh, the ability to purchase firewood for $10, or they can do a bit of a bigger bundle for you for 15. Yeah, this is the upper, upper site. It's just, that's the piggery just there, that little shed. So if you go past the piggery, it's a first left. And then down, oh, you can't really see it from here, I'll just, Mosey on down the hill. If you look just between the trees here, that's where we are, right down the back there. So, rules of a farm, obviously, if you go through a gate, make sure you close it behind you so the animals don't get out. Um, to get to the camp we're at, you go through two gates. 
one to get into the area where the upper camp is and then one to get down to the lower area. This has got to be my favourite, favourite part of this day so far. G'day boys and girls. Hello. Oh. There's also some little piggies over here. Some little boys and girls. Oh no, what have I started? What have I done? I pushed, I pushed the wrong button. now that I've rolled them up. <laughs> this is a beautiful spot. We woke up this morning with the sun coming through the end of our camper. 15 year wedding anniversary today and our morning could not have been any better. It was, it was just magical. And we get to stay here. What kind of experience is this where you get to come down and <laughs> pat the sheep, the pigs, the cows? All right. <laughs> commotion. And I feel like little boy Pete right now because. <laughs> what an amazing spot. This has really lifted my spirits and Dave's as well. Um, it's just, it is just purely magical. I really am in my element right now. Happy anniversary, Gavin. Thank you. We're at the Bundy Distillery. Guess what's going to happen. <laughs> So we've come and done a tour at the Bundaberg Distillery and it was better than what I was expecting. It was, it yeah. was great. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of dad jokes. A lot of dad be jokes. Prepared. <laughs> be prepared for dad jokes. Also be prepared for the tasting service afterwards. It is mwah. Yeah, we had some really good liqueurs that yep. they've got. Uh, salted caramel and was it banana, banana and, and toffee. toffee. Oh. Oh, those things are on fire. And the Solera. It's a um, traditional sort of... Sipping rum. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. Wine. So as part of the tour, we weren't allowed to take in any um, battery operated devices, phones, cameras, etc. past the main museum. So be prepared for that as well. I'm sorry we couldn't show you on that tour, but just spend the 30 bucks and come and try it out for yourselves. Yeah, it was it really re good. It was really, really a really good experience. Dave's half cut now, so I'm gonna take him home. No, you're gonna take me to the pub. I'm gonna take advantage of him, how about that? Even better. He. <laughs> I need a nap! <laughs> and a big day, Baba. Big day, Baba. I need a nap! <laughs> Gotta say, there's some pretty spectacular buildings in Bundaberg. So, what's been the highlight of the day? Oh! 
highlight of the day, I think, was waking up at camp. The camp that we're at is pretty smicko. The place we're staying at is called Candyland Farm and the camp itself is called One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. Got a splitter cable. It's got a look. <clears throat> Dave finds a camping shop in town. He's like, gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta okay. check it out. The cable. Delightful. For more solar. solar. More solar options. We've got flexibility now. <laughs> taken a day trip out from camp and we've come to a place called Mystery Craters. It's kind of a weird little place, like we, we just saw a brown sign and followed it. But yeah, there's all of these craters that are in the ground that have been, they have no, no idea how they got here. The geologists can't figure out how these craters got here. But there's 35 of them. I'll just turn the camera around and you can have a look. I've got no idea how these craters were made because it's not volcanic, apparently. It's kind of, what did they say in the, the little introduction video that you watch when you first get here? Um, it's a bit of a fusion between desert versus ocean in terms of it's more sandstone and, I can't remember, red ochre? Yep. Red ochre sand. Um, so yeah, they're trying to trying to figure out what it is and then encourage you to come up with your own conclusion, but no one really knows how they got here. So this was all hand excavated in the 70s. Someone, they found one and then they just kept excavating. He was clearing land for farm uh, to grow some crops or something. And then he found one of the holes. But yeah, they don't know how deep the, the craters are. They've only dug them down this far. There is a theory that it is the whole thing is a meteorite, meteorite. and the, the rest of it's buried under the ground. Did I have 74 geologists or something like that from all over the world come over and try to figure out what it was? And yeah. there was two, two German geologists that had said their theory is that it is actually a meteorite. And what's happened as it's hit the earth, it's this would have been either swamp or ocean. So rather than it shattering as it's hit the earth, it's embedded itself underwater and that's how it's still intact. It's actually really sort of pretty cool. We watched the video and... Um, it was filmed by the Leyland brothers in the, in the 70s, but the start of it is um, the son and daughter of the current owners yep. explaining um, what, what it's about, essentially. They're saying it, it's not volcanic, so that's where you would normally find craters like and, this. And you'll probably think around this area as well because the cane fields are, have got volcanic red dirt, um, which we learnt on the Bundaberg brewery tour yesterday, um, that that's quite common around this area, that this formation is not from that. It is very interesting though, hey? It took this, this guy two years to excavate it by hand. That is a big area to excavate by hand. In the 70s as well. In the 70s. 
So this is in between Bundaberg and Jinjin. How does it fall in nature? Geology is so nuts, really, isn't it? Well, all it is is the study of time and pressure. That's that's if you really need the toilet. <laughs> time and pressure. Wow, look at these ones with the um, animal shapes in the back. if we didn't check out the Rue Heaven. been in his penis in the world. You don't want to wake it from slumber. It'll spit everywhere. Just to say people make up in crop territory is what myself and Harry are doing right now. We're far too close to the water's edge. But the real mistake people make up in crop territory, whether it's having a fish or a swim, is actually this. Going down into the water and instantly Monty locks on. And take note, he's not crashing and bashing across the water's surface trying to get me. He's the unseen predator. And as I tap over here, he hones into where I am. He's looking very, very keen. So I'm going to pass him over to you, Harry. Thanks for staring him up a bit. Right, yeah, we'll try and get Monty to put on a bit of a hit. Come on. There we go. Give it up for him, guys. This is an absolute weapon. Now, he's put on a couple of half decent strikes from the water's edge, but Harry's going to show us another spot where they can get himself something to eat. Then he'll try and come up and out of the water. Whoop. He missed that, mate. I'll keep him over this side. You can grab him. What? You've got, your, you've got your special water shoes on. Yeah, you're good. I don't know, man. Here you go now. <laughs> right. We'll see if we can get him up for another one. I'll hopefully get it in as we up this time. There we go, give it up for them guys, what a I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and um, sit down in front of Monty. Maybe even lay down in front of Monty. And he's making no attempt to come forward and get me. But if I move further away but get him his water, he does nothing. Awesome, mate. Now, you're not, there we go. He can't help himself. He's going to take the shortest route back to the water and turn around because that's where he knows he's got a real shot at Harrison or myself. Got to say, that was a pretty good experience. That was, it's the best zoo we've been to. Ever. 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 
just putting it out there. But for us, it's a day. It's a day. That's a day. Back to camp. Yeah, for a nap. <laughs> it's a big day of walking, but the best cafe with the best view. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. We've had a great time in the Bundaberg region um, and Australia Zoo. Do yourselves a favour, get there. It is fantastic. That'll do for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Thank you.